Testing. All righty. Now we're gonna wait just, I guess one more minute for people to trickle in. Okay, um, I think we'll just get started. Um, so we're just gonna keep going through topic models. Oh, thanks. Uh, I think my cough is a little bit better. I mean, we'll find out today. Um, I, I do think doing the actual lecture uh, makes it a little bit worse, but, um, but it's fine. Um, so, so yeah, so today we're just gonna uh, finish off topic models, hopefully. Um, there's still actually <laughs> a fair bit to cover, um, but hopefully we can do it in a lot of time. Um, so I, uh, just some admin stuff. I um, posted some updates to the syllabus in terms of like weight and everything. Um, I may or may not change the assignment weights. Um, I'm still debating whether or not I want the earlier assignments to be weighted more versus which is currently now, which is I said assignments later would be weighted more. Um, I might change that. Um, but I mean, ultimately it will be roughly the same, you know, difference of like one or 2%. So ultimately it doesn't really matter too much. Um, okay, so actually the first thing I wanna show you guys is I just happened to stumble upon this uh, on Reddit. Um, so let me share with you this really nice um, interactive visualization of Gib sampling, right? So remember, we talked about Gib sampling at the end of last lecture and the idea of it, okay, so let's take a step back. The point of this is that we want to understand a, dis, a posterior distribution, right? Basically some probability distribution over multiple variables. And a lot of the time we don't have access to the closed form solution or the closed form of that distribution. So we might want to sample from it. If we can sample from it, then we can you know, just look at sort of the empirical histogram that we can produce and then basically have some feeling for what the distribution looks like. Um, a lot of times we don't have the joint, you know, we can't sample from the joint. Maybe we can sample from these conditional distributions. And that's what we're gonna use to basically figure out the posterior for the topic model, okay? Um, 
Okay, so in case there are questions, I'm gonna, why are questions hidden? Okay, for some reason I can't see questions. Um, so let me just show you this visualization and I'll come back if there are actual questions. Uh, so this is, let me, I think it's nicer to hide, hide this. Um, so basically this is Gibbs sampling, right? So um, I'm gonna, well, okay, let's increase the delay here. Like, so start again, yeah, reset. Okay, so what, what you can see with the skip sampling, okay, this is way too fast. Um, you can see, right, what we're doing is we're gonna basically, you have a, okay, this is like X and Y, right? So X is the X axis, Y is the Y axis. And each step we're gonna do what we had before where you condition on the Y, and then you uh, sample from the X and you do back and forth, right? So that's why if you, let's do this really slowly, right? Every time what's happening is you're gonna basically project one way on along the axis. So right, so you go left or right. So if you're, you know, if your Y is the same, then you're gonna move along this X axis if your x is the same, you're going to move along this y axis. So you're basically jumping via the axes every single time, right? Um, okay, so you know visually, you can you can sort of see that it's actually sort of picking up the uh, the distribution, which in this particular example is going to be banana shaped. Um, okay, I, I sort of want to make sure I can see the chat. Um, So, oh, right. So in so in this case, what actually is happening is the um, here you're doing two at the same time. So you're doing one. You, it's. I wish I could stop this. Um, how do I stop this? Okay. So this is really slow now, right? So so here they're actually doing like they're doing the two step at once, right? So you're doing the x and then you're doing the y, right? So then you basically treat it as, remember what we want is we want pairs of x's and y's, so we would just do an x first and then we do a y and that would be our pair, right? So actually what's happening is that each time you're basically you know, creating a new point by doing two jumps, which is basically the same thing, okay? So, so this is, you know, this is a visualization where we can look at, you know, another example here. Uh, we have a multimodal, right? Okay, let's, right, so this is it's a bit slow, but the key point is that, yeah, you're just generating these points um, in the manner that we described uh, in class on Monday. Um, I can go over that a little bit, but I just want you to notice that, uh, you know, if, if I speed this up, this is basically going to, even though, you know, I, I, we'll, ex, we'll show this again, they're not entirely de independent, right? Ideally what we would want is we would want independent samples from our joint distribution. But the way we set this up is that it's not independent. And yet, even though we have this dependency, you can sort of see that this is actually picking up the true uh, uh, distribution here, right? So in this case, the distribution looks like this. And if you were to look at, um, your empirical uh, distribution, you know, sort of smoothed out, obviously, then you could basically recover what is the joint distribution. So Gibbs sampling, you know, turns out, it, it seems like a really crude way of getting at the joint distribution, but actually um, it works pretty well. Okay, so anyone have any questions about, okay, let me slow this down. Anyone have any questions about this? this demonstration oh yes let me send you the link oops that is not why <laughs> okay here we go uh oh wrong i sent it to one person okay uh so yeah so i guess you can play play with this at home um Okay, so uh, there's a question. How do you know when to stop Gibbs sampling? 
Um, that is a good question. Um, do you want to try? Do you have? Does anyone have any ideas about when you might stop Gibbs sampling? While I take a sip. I mean, okay. So let I mean, let's look at this here, right? So we can we can watch this. If I if I don't know the truth. We can watch it a little bit. Um, so clearly, we we won't, we wouldn't want to stop now, right? It hasn't picked up the uh, sort of the the distribution. Um, okay, no one has any guesses. So I think what, you know, I, I, like with, with a lot of these computational things, um, you know, if you have the time, you would just do them for a very, very long time until you can sort of see that, you know, your distribution really, really isn't changing that much. Um, so, you know, obviously in this particular case, because we're doing the visualization, um, you know, oh, someone has, people have suggestions. Maybe it converges at some point, stop at some fixed iteration. Yeah, so I think, you know, this, in this particular case, when we're looking at this particular visualization, it looks like it, you know, obviously it depends on how long we wait for. Um, yeah, you would just run it for some certain amount of time. You could have some check or it's like, okay, let's, let's look at the empirical distribution that is actually being created and see if there's, you know, it's like SGD, maybe there is some point in which the empirical distribution doesn't really change that much, right? Um, right, so someone says, I guess, how do we measure change in the distribution? Each individual new point doesn't change it much, right? Um, yeah, so ideally, at some point, you would expect that, yeah, like at this point here, you, you know, you are, you can just, look at the empirical distribution, um, some smooth version of it and see if it changes that much. And at some point it's gonna be converging um, to the limiting distribution. And so you can just stop. Okay, this is, I need to stop this. This is scaring me. Oh, what are we doing? Okay, how do I stop this? Okay. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, at least if you look at sort of the way these things work, there's just some, um, some set fixed iteration because usually these things run like obviously it depends on how complicated the model is and depends on your your data um but a lot of times you just run it for for a very long time yeah um but actually the more important question is well okay so yeah i'm going to go back to the how do i stop this? okay so i'm going to finish this visualization and go back to the slides Where are my slides? Okay. Oh, now I can't see the chat. Where's my chat? Um, sorry, hold on. Okay. Cool. Okay, so. So one other point, which I think is, um, so I, I won't spend too much time on this, um, but in practice, if you think about what we're doing, right? Um, because we're doing this alternating procedure, um, what you notice is that this, this X that comes out from sampling from this distribution, oh no, let's, let's look at the simple example. Where's the simple, oh yeah, so right. So, Sorry. All right, so remember what, what we're doing, we, we have some initialization, right? And then we're gonna sample, you know, using the previous one and keep sampling and keep sampling, right? So the point here is that, first of all, you know, these two things are gonna be, uh, so this set, this point, is gonna be pretty dependent on this point, right? So, sorry, 
this point is going to be de- fairly correlated with this point because, you know, obviously when I calculated x2, I needed to use x1, right? So actually there are certain tricks you can do when you do good sampling. One thing you can do is you can sort of basically skip a few of these steps, right? So what you might think about doing is you might, you know, x3, y3, blah, 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 but then you wait until like x20, y20, right? So you, so you repeat the whole procedure, but you basically only take, let's say, I only take the 20th, every 20th point, right? Because now the dependency between this guy and this guy is much smaller, right? So that's, so that's one way to sort of, sort of reduce the issue of dependency through the skip sampling procedure. The other issue that is important to note is that here we have this initial point and obviously which, whichever point you start on is going to sort of, you know, potentially affect the, uh, the trajectory of your points and you, and you don't want it to affect, you don't want your points because you, you want your points to be independently sampled, right? So what a lot of times you'll do is what is known as burn in, where basically you sort of have an initial point, you have an initial point, and then you just let your Gibbs sampler run for like, you know, a hundred iterations. And then you start um, sampling, like taking the samples there. So, so, so these are the two sort of tricks you can do to, to sort of ensure that your actual Gibbs samples are somewhat independent. Um, some people say in practice, this doesn't really matter too much for Gibbs sampling, but anyway, that's a side comment. Okay, any questions? So, okay, so, so far, like, you know, I've talked about Gibbs sampling at a very high level. Um, I think that's obviously, that's the most important part here. Like the, the fundamental idea of what Gibbs sampling is. I hope you guys understand that now. Um, in a little bit, we will go through actually how this relates to topic ones. Okay, so any questions? Okay, no questions. Nice. So actually, um, what I want to do is to go back to this one slide that I sort of fast forwarded through. Where is it? Sorry. Right, okay. So I'm gonna try and explain why LDA works, okay? Uh, so the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a question, okay? So here's my question to you, and I want you to spend uh, you know, 30 seconds, obviously don't look at your notes, um, I want you to spend 30 seconds writing out what our joint distribution looks like. Um, so obviously, you know, in your own, like you, you, don't, you don't need to put it on chat or anything. Um, just spend 30 seconds or however, I'll give you 20 seconds. Just write down what the joint distribution is, um, you know, in terms of its decomposition. Um, and in order to do this, like I think the best way to think about this is just think about the generative model and how that works. So see if you can, off the top of your head, write out the joint distribution. Obviously, I'm not telling you to solve it. I'm just saying, you know, literally just write down the joint distribution. What is the decomposition that we saw in that key uh, slide that I was pointing out before? Oh, I should, I should have a timer. All right, so if anyone has the answer, or what they think is the answer. If you're if you're very confident, hey, uh, please raise your hand and I'll write out your answer.
Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start, right? So the thing that's easiest for us is the topic distribution, right? Because the topics are basically this thing that's sort of by itself, right? So k from one to k of probability of beta k, whoops, given it. Right. Uh, okay, so someone asked, is this the same question in the homework problem one? No, 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 no this is not the question. All I'm, like, I, I, I just want you to like fill out, like, you know, you remember one of the slides has this joint distribution. I just want you to think it like basically regurgitated from memory. And I sort of started the first section, which is this part, right? Um, so obviously it, the answers are literally in your notes, like maybe one or two slides. Um, but I think it, I think it's sort of instructive to try and do this without looking, um, just so you sort of have some inkling about where maybe you're confused about stuff. Okay, so, all right, so I guess no one is too confident or people have already looked the answer. Um, all right, so I'm gonna keep going, all right, so, this part should be good. Now what we're gonna do is, let's think about the generative model. So we have these topics. These topics are just basically sort of a global variable that sort of governs the way you create these documents, right? Now we're gonna actually create the documents themselves. So we're gonna, first thing, we're gonna iterate through the documents, right? That means I'm gonna have to do a product over let's say remember d e from one to capital t right and then what we're going to do is we're going to first create the topic as topic proportions for each document right so that would be p of theta t given alpha right okay this this part should be fairly straightforward now it's getting a little bit complicated. We're gonna have to go into each document and look at each word. All right, so, sorry, so I'm gonna put a bracket here. Actually, I'm gonna move this a little bit because, oops, All Okay, so these are products, and then it's gonna do N from one to capital N. Okay, so what is this? This is P of, all right, this is gonna be our Z, DN. Okay, now what is this dependent on? Well, this is only actually dependent on theta D, right? Because I'm already in, a particular document, right? And then once I have that, then I have basically I'm drawing my WDN, right? And that's gonna be dependent on ZDN. And here I actually have to have all one to K. Sorry, this, this should be like this. Oh, okay, so, so uh, someone asked, can you remind us how you define each variable? They're getting, we're getting confused. Yeah, so um, it's helpful to have, I mean, I, I guess we can write out the general model again. Um, so, do I want to just show you the general model? Um, okay, give me, give me a second. Let me let me get out the generative model. Again. Okay, so um, 
so yeah so this you like like at some point you, this should become second nature okay uh so this is really really important so what are the beta k's remember okay so the beta k's are the the topics right and we basically think of them as Dirichlet uh, alphas. Well, no, betas. Right. So I'm gonna create. Now oh, this, this is a bit small. Right for k one to capital k, I have my topics. Well, okay. I, I think I'm just gonna repeat myself here because um, this is basically what I just did when I created the joint distribution. Um, but we can we can go through it a little bit. So for D in one to capital D, we're gonna first create, okay, right? These are the topic proportions. This is Dirichlet alpha, right? Um, and then for n in one to n, we're gonna first create our state. So these are the topic labels. And then WDN is multilineal beta ZDN. These are the words. Okay. So yeah, so I yeah, so I mean you should you should just have this like somewhere in a you know uh, what, what do you call those sticky notes or whatever you call them. Um like this is sort of fundamental to basic topic models. Um okay. Anyone have any questions about this? I mean, I, I hope I hope for some of you this is just clarification, verification. Um, you know, I'm again just repeating myself. Um, but actually, I, it's it's going to be it's going to be useful to um, write out this joint distribution because what we're going to look at is this is going to help us understand why the topic model actually does what it does. Okay. Okay. Um, was anyone? Oh, never mind. I was going to ask if anyone was it. Did going to ask if anyone was able to recreate that equation from scratch? But but then it's like tooting your own horn, so it's it'd be a bit weird. Okay. Moving on. Actually, I need to I need to keep this. So I'm going to move this guy here. Mm, let's move him all the way down. Uh oh. Not too far down. Okay. Okay. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to then convert this into logs, right? Just because it's nice to look at logs instead. It's still the same thing, right? So we're going to have is k one to capital k log p beta k over eta plus sum from d from one to capital t log p theta t given alpha plus sum from n to n of okay now i'm actually gonna be a little bit um well I, this is not really an abuse of a notation but you have to be a little bit careful here right so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually write log of theta d of z d n. I'll explain a little bit what that means. Plus log of and theta z d n of w d n. All right, so let me put these brackets in. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's work through this equation here, right? So 
this this first this first part here is uh, just you know taking logs. This part should be fine. Then I <coughs> uh oh take logs again. This part is also basically one to one. The thing here is a little bit complicated. Um, can anyone tell me what this is? Anyone have a guess about why I wrote this guy like this? Also, hopefully I'm not like ignoring people. Oh, sorry. Go is ahead. Is it the conditional distribution of Z D N conditioned on uh, theta D? Yeah, but what, so, so, so like, why can I write it like that? Uh, that I'm not sure of. Okay, so what is the distribution of this, of the ZDNs? They're multinomial in theta D. Right, right. So then, well, so then the probability of the ZDN, the particular instance would just be like the theta DN, like the ZDN component of theta D, right? So theta D is acting like a parameter. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, right, because, yeah, so, right, so if you think about the multinomial, it's just like a die, and then the theta D is corresponds to like the faces, the probability of the faces of the die, and the ZDN is just, well, which face did you actually like see, right, so then, so here, it's, the, yeah, the abusive, it's a little a bit abusive in terms of the notation, but this is just saying, uh, what's the probability? I mean, what's the likelihood? It's just given by the respective face on the theta D die. Um, yeah. Does that make sense, everyone? Um, right, so, so okay, so so basically the answer here is like this is just what you get when you look at the multinomial, right? If you want to look at the probability, the likelihood for the multinomial being a certain value, then it's just equivalent to looking at the respective face of the parameter of that, right? So you can think of it as just like a okay, so theta d here is gonna be a k sided die, right? K corresponds to the number of topics. So whichever topic that you picked, well then you just refer to the kth entry of theta d, and that's gonna be your probability. So professor, quick question, is it yeah. then like, if you had a regular die, where instead of it being just normal, where all the faces were equal probability, like the number one has a probability corresponding to one and six corresponding to six. And so the faces themselves give you a sense of the likelihood of that face actually occurring, or is that is that wrong? Wait, sorry, I'm confused. What, what say it again? So, what what, so what the, is your the setup faces? The so I'm asking if it's that the faces are. You're trying to grasp what you mean by the faces are corresponding to the probabilities. Is it one where you know in a regular die the face of six mm. has the same probability as the face of one, but in this unique die the face of six has six times the probability of face one. Is that sort of what you're trying to get at? So that when the face yeah, maybe. It's yeah, okay, I understand. Sorry, okay. Let's look at an actual die, right? Um, so theta D, what is theta D? Theta D, okay, so if the die was a regular die, then theta D would just be one on six, one on six, one on six, one on six. I don't know how to count one on six, right? So, so that would be theta D, right? So remember theta D is the probability of landing on a particular face, okay? So then, if I know theta d, then I know the probability that, that should be assigned to seeing a particular number, right? In this particular case, so zdn would correspond to which face it actually landed on, right? In this case, if it's fair, then I, I, don't, I, don't, need to, I don't need to bother because I know it's going to be one on one on six, right? But if it, you know, if actually, you know, usually it's not going to be like that. It's going to be zero, you know, let's put two here, right? Then in order to tell, well, what was the likelihood of seeing a particular face, I just have to check, well, which number, right? So, so suppose ZDN was three, 
then I should just check theta d. Well, the third entry of theta d gives me the likelihood that that was the likelihood of seeing that data point. Yeah. So okay. So this is it's 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 good to go through an example here. Um, I hope that now explains what I was trying to say. Yeah. Sorry. Good. Good. Good point. Um, okay. So right. So so that so so this is why I can basically rewrite this you know this probability likelihood function in terms of actually just you know theta d the z d nth entry of theta d. And if you think carefully, you can basically do the same thing for my beta. So the 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 w right because what's that going to be if I see a particular word. And suppose I already know which uh, topic it is, and I just have to basically look back at my topic distribution, right? Remember, a topic is a distribution over words, and then read out the uh, probability that was assigned to that particular word. Oh, so is it that ZDN can be seen as an index for the die? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, no, okay, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, basically, ZDN corresponds to the result of rolling the die, right? Like, if you, if you, if you remember what we're doing, right? What we're doing is the theta D corresponds to the proportions of topics for a particular document, right? And then the ZDN is I'm drawing from that distribution. I'm like, I'm trying to create topics, right? Remember that I'm creating topic labels. So these are just realizations of flipping that case I did die. And, you know, in, like, in, in statistics, we care about likelihood. So this is how you calculate the likelihood of a particular set of data. Um, what is the purpose of this change of notation? Uh, right. So yeah. So I guess right. So so for me, I think this is not really a change of notation, but this is actually telling you explicitly what I mean when I'm looking at this multivariate. Um, sorry, uh, this multinomial. Um, like so. This is so. This is so. What I'm saying is. It, you know, in order to calculate my probability of ZDN given theta d, it literally is just looking at the theta d index, the ZDN index of theta d. Um, and it's, it might not be obvious that that's the case just by looking at the multinomial. But you're right. The 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 notation, at least in my mind, the notation seems more helpful because I uh, literally it seems like it looks like a theta d, and then I'm just taking you know the ZDN entry of it. So it's it's trying to help you sort of visualize what actually these probabilities correspond to. But if it may, if it makes it more confusing, then you can go back to this this original one and in your head think about actually what is the meaning of the likelihood for a multinomial, whichever it works for you. So I, I personally think the second one is a little bit more intuitive. Um, so the, okay, so ultimately, the reason why I'm going through this derivation, uh, actually spending a lot of time on it, I'm sorry, because uh, we need to definitely get through this. The reason why I'm, I'm gonna go through this is because this, um, this here is where you can start to think about how topic models actually work, okay? so. Okay, so what are we trying to do? Remember, we're trying to calculate this posterior, right? And we know that the posterior is, you know, basically yeah, proportional to the joint distribution, right? So if you understand the joint distribution, you can sort of understand the posterior. So it's not that different. Um, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the joint distribution and we're going to try and intuit what actually this thing is going to do 
when we sort of you know try to fit this right because if you think about what we're trying to do we're trying to maximize we're trying to trying to find likelihoods that are large right it's you know it's a little bit like maximum likelihood but obviously that's the frequentist approach but what we're trying to do is we're trying to find um you know values of these parameters in such a way that the likelihood is is high All right so let's think about how this actually works okay so this part is hopefully is going to be intuitive um please let me know if it's not okay so the two key things that are going to be driving this are going to be the betas and the thetas okay so let's think about how we might do this okay so if we look at the thetas right so remember what are the thetas the thetas are the topic proportions right for a particular document right so actually what we want to do is we want to maximize the topic proportions for a for a document right why is that so if i look at my theta d z d n here right if i if i have a theta d sorry if i have so if there was only one topic for a particular document so okay so let's look at document let's look at d equals to one right and i have a theta d here that corresponds to d equals to one right d equals to one so it's just theta one i remember theta one is a distribution over topics but suppose theta one was just let's say i have three topics one zero zero right what that means is this expression here is going to be maximized for that particular case right because every time first of all i can only give out topic one and every time i see topic one i'm my likelihood is going to be one right so in order to maximize this term what I want is I want to set up my topic proportion, say the D, such that they're basically, you know, in the extreme case, they're just all from one topic, right? Because if they're all from one topic, then then this this quantity is just going to be one every single time, right? If you think about it, suppose I had the other extreme where you know it's going to be one third, one third, one third right if they're going to be if they're all one third one third then then basically instead of it instead of this number being one every time this number is going to be a third every single time okay so this may be a little bit confusing um right so what are we trying to do we're trying to we're trying to find we're trying to think about which parameters are going to increase the likelihood for our joint distribution, for, for, the, for the, the joint likelihood, right? And we're trying to think about which ways would the topic model want to push my parameters? Uh, sorry, yes, okay. Yeah, so, so here, right, in this particular case, what I have is I have two extremes, right? In one extreme, if I put every topic, er, sorry, if, 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 if every document is just assigned to one single topic, then if I look at this expression, then this is going to basically be one every single time. And so it's going to be maximizing this number, right? On the other hand, if I have sort of equal proportions for every single topic, then this number is just going to be 
you know, basically the smallest it like, could possibly be. Right, so in terms of the theta d's, what top, the topic model wants to do is it wants to push all the uh, all these theta d's to be very, very sparse. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Anyone have any questions about that? <laughs> I, w I wish I could see people's faces. I, I feel like... Sorry, Professor? Oh, yes. Yeah. Go on. What a sparsity of, w of theta d's relative to what you were just describing mean, right? Because the second right. one is not sparse. So you're trying to say you want it to yes. be sparse. You want it to be between like the first one instead of the second one? Yes, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, well, no. I'm saying the, 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 uh, this algorithm, well, yeah, this Bayesian analysis will prefer, because I want to sort of pick stuff that's going to maximize this likelihood, right? Um, so then what's going to happen is that theta d's where it's basically sparse, are going to have larger values of this term. Um, and the intuition is that this, you know, if in an extreme case where every dog, every word is from a, the same topic, then this likelihood is just going to be one every single time. And the other extreme, if I have, you know, equal proportions of topics, then this is going to be a third every single time. And so, you know, in this case, <laughs> You know, it would just be like sum from n to one of capital N of log of of log of one versus sum from n to one capital N of log of a third. Okay, so this is obviously larger than this. So we want theta d to be sparse because we want every document to have a distinct topic. Uh, no, so so I, so here I'm not I'm not making claims about what we want. I'm saying that if the goal here is to find parameters that maximize the likelihood, what the algorithm is going to try to do is it's going to try and sparsify the theta d's. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the reverse here, right? Obviously this is, there needs to be two competing forces here, otherwise then you're just gonna get sparsity, right? It turns out, you know, now we're gonna focus on this term here, right? And this term is gonna basically give you the opposite effect, right? So let's think about what's gonna happen. Okay, so I'm, getting less and less space. I'm going to keep everything. Um, okay. So if you look at my betas, right, we're going to try to maximize the probability assigned to words in a chosen topic. Right, so essentially the same thing here is that i.e. my beta k's are going to be sparse. Okay, so let's think about why this is the case, right? So, <clears throat> so let's, <clears throat> so how would, how would we want to distribute these betas? such that I'm going to maximize this particular term, right? Ultimately, what that means is basically, I, I, I want to have this number to be big whenever, just whenever, right? What that means is that basically, I want it to be such that if, for, for a given topic, if I see a word there, I want this to be really, really, really large. And if, if, if I don't see a word there, I want this to be really, really small, right? So, <laughs> so what, this wants, what's this, what this wants to do is this wants to basically create sparse 
um, topics that basically, you know, only correspond to words that were given for a particular that that were that were associated with a particular topic. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> So basically what we have here is we have in, in terms of this, this set A, so in, in terms of the force of sort of this uh, A, right? What is A doing? A is gonna try and make theta D sparse, which basically means it's trying to set up each document to be just part of one topic. Right, but the problem is that if if you set it up to be part of one topic, then that means every word now needs to be part of that topic. Right. So okay. So what do I mean by this? You know, let's 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 have you know this uh, Earth was ah oh, whatever. Yeah, I'm just gonna write keywords here. Earth. Dog, people, size, something. Okay, so so this is a document, right? This uh, this first force where I'm trying to maximize my theta d. What that's going to do is it's going to basically try and push it to be that every single document is just from one topic, right? But what that means is that then I need to assign probabilities to each of these words. Right, and then, and then I'm gonna try and assign high probability to each of these words. But then because this one topic is gonna to be, you know, this one document is part of one topic, then th these words need to be in, you know, this word needs to have, you know, high sort of high probability in each of, for this particular topic, right? And so there's basically no sharing going along, right? So you, you not only do you want to sort of be you know stingy about assigning the topic but you also want to sort of push all these um these uh the the betas for that corresponds to this particular topic you want to assign them to be high as well right here i'm saying let's say these all these all have topic label one Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I'm worried I'm confusing everyone. Um, anyway, so the idea behind all of this is that you have these two competing forces, right? One of them is trying to sparsify the theta Ds. One of them is trying to sparsify the beta Ks. Then what you have actually is that you basically have sort of a middle ground. And what, what does that mean? What that means is that you, instead of trying to find, you know, instead of trying to make a one document part of one topic, right, you make a document part of say a few topics, right? So, so you, you relax the sparsity for the number of topics, right? But then at the same time, now each topic can, you know, ultimately be comprised of a few words that are sort of taken together. And if they're taken together, then you can still assign a high probability to them because they're co-occurring together, right? So hopefully that gives you some intuition as to why if you actually run this algorithm, it's actually giving you something interesting in terms of like these separated topics, right? What's happening is that the, there are these two forces that are trying to you know, increase my likelihood, right? But they're thankfully two competing forces. One is trying to, you know, make the theta D sparse. One is trying to make the beta K sparse. Eventually, you know, you have sort of like semi-sparsity in both areas, right? What does that semi-sparsity mean here? Well, in terms of the beta Ks, the beta Ks correspond to the topics, right? So then I have, instead of saying, you know, some extreme 
every word comes on through just like, you know, three, every topic comes on like three maximum words, then I just have a more words in my topics. And for my document, I would just have, you know, a few topics instead. Okay. Any questions? Oh, okay. So someone raised their hand. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I just quickly. Can you explain why um, the, the sparsity of beta k's is acting as an opposing force here? Right. Um, yeah. So the beta k here is it's a little bit more subtle. Um, the idea is that so. Okay. So what what do we want? We want, we want it to be such, we want to be in such a way that every time we see a word, okay, so let's, okay, so let's just fix, um, hold on, right, so let's consider this case here, right, so here we have, here I'm saying they're all from one particular topic, right, um, and so what, what I need to do is, in order for this to even make sense, I need to actually like give some mass to all these words, right? And so every single doc, you know, for, for each document, okay, let me, let, me, let me actually be a little bit more extreme here. Um, so what, what I wanna do is, okay, I'm, I'm gonna delete this. Well, there must be a better way of deleting this than there is. Okay, so let's look at document one, let's look at document two, let's look at document three. Okay, so we have words here, whole bunch of words. Okay, and let's suppose I assign this to topic one. And it's a topic one, science so a topic two, and it's topic two. Okay. Um, so what I okay, so so now I've already like let's say I've maximized my theta d's, I'm trying to maximize that likelihood. Now let's think about well what we what we we're gonna do if we're trying to maximize the beta case as well. Um, so the issue here is that in order for this to make sense, right, now I can I just need to consider my beta ones. Right. The problem is that because I've put every single word into this one topic, I need to give some mass to all of these words. Right. You know, it, so it could it could be small. Okay. Obviously, I want it to be really. I I want these to be really big, right? Because I the point is I want this number here to be big. Right. But the but remember, I'm constrained by the fact that these have to sum up to one. Right, so if they have to sum up to one, then I don't want to put words. I want to. I want to have as little words as I can. But the problem is, I'm forced to put mass onto these words because they appear in this topic. Right. So essentially, the reason why it is sort of you have this um, opposing force is that because I assign every document to one topic. I'm I, I I'm inevitably spreading out the mass because I need to assign mass to every single word, right? The more words that I put into a particular topic, the less you know, you know. Then each one of them, I I I, I want to maximize each one of them, but then I have too many words, so then I can only do you know one on the number of words, right? Th does that make sense? So in, in the other extreme case, right? In the other extreme case beta one here, you know, if, if the, if beta one only corresponded to one word, right? So, you know, let's, let's look at, let's look at this example here where instead every, every word here was one, right? But the, maybe only one word was two, right? And okay, let me just ignore these for now. Only one word was two. Then what that means is, 
if I have a beta two, then I can assign all my mass to that one word, right? And so I'm gonna have a really high number here, which is nice because I want to have high numbers, right? But this only works if I have sparsity, but and this only works if I, you know, can like be sort of not crude about which words I assign to which topics, right? But this guy, by maximizing this topic of portions, I am, you know, I'm sort of not being, I'm being very crude here. So I'm putting in all the words into a particular topic and that's not what I want. And so what you get is you, instead you basically get halfway, right? You, you find words that sort of appear together. And so you sort of get that sort of balance between these two ideas. Um, yeah, I would try and think about this. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a little. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a little weird. Okay, so there's another question, which is, um, can you discuss what happens if we have the wrong number of topics in reality? Um, right. So so this actually, I obviously I think gets to the homework. Um, so so far, yeah. I mean, I mean. Unfortunately, we haven't even gotten to the algorithm yet. Um, but here, whenever we talk about topic models, we just have a fixed k, right? Uh, k being the number of topics. And then we were like, okay, let's just fix the k and not worry about it. Um, so in practice, really what you need to, you know, well, okay. So obviously, when you think about these documents, there are no like true topics, right? You know, to, you know this this is still a, an exercise in, in modeling and you have some sort of vague things that come out and that seem to correspond to our intuitions. Uh, so, so, you know, so there's no like true topic, um, but in general, you know, you, there is some sort of sweet spot that, you know, the, to the, the topics are still representative of like what you as a human can, can in intuit. And also like, you know, has a wide enough sort of, variability in terms of like the different types of topics. Um, and I think I, I just for now, I, I'm, I'm only going to say that it's, it, it's, it, it's sort of an art, right? Like what you, a lot of times what people do is like, they'll pick a few roughly, they, they think there should be something like 20 topics and then they check what the topics correspond to. And if it sort of matches your intuition, then, then it's fine. Cause ultimately, you know, there's no right answer here. Um, I, there are obviously methods to try and, you know, figure out to what is the best optimal K, um, but we're not going to work through those examples here. Okay, that took uh, a lot longer than I was expecting. Um, all right, so this is going to be tricky. <laughs> uh, all right. As I said, topic model is, is actually, um, there's just a lot of moving parts to it. And um, I think many times when we teach it, we breeze over a lot of the uh, sort of the small details that are actually pretty fundamental to understanding it. Um, so, okay, so we're gonna try and get through this. I actually might sort of go over, I hope no one has class, because um, I, I really wanna just get through to this section because this is obviously like sort of the, the most important part. All right, so what, what are we doing, right? So we are trying to calculate the posterior. I'm gonna talk a little bit faster so we can go through more. Um, and we're gonna use Gibbs sampling, right? Um, how are we gonna do this? Oh, all right, do, do, do. Okay, so it's, this part is a little bit confusing. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna spend too much time because I, I actually think the most important thing is the final product of this, but we're gonna go through this a little bit quickly. Um, and if you have any questions, obviously feel free to email me or something. Uh, so, you know, something sort of here, which is sort of important is that you have these two notions of um, variables here. We have, you know, the topic is sort of, you can think of it as almost separate from everything else, right? Because it's not sort of 
in play when you're actually dealing with the data itself. Um, so you have the theta d's and your zdn's, and these are the things that we're actually going to focus on. Uh, the beta k's, as you'll see, actually sort of pop out um, sort of later on. <clears throat> okay, so if you were to just assume that you had topics, right? Assume you were just given these topics. Even then, if you were to try and calculate this posterior, you would still be screwed, right? So the, the form of this is actually pretty intractable. Um, so we need to be a little bit more clever, okay? <clears throat> so here's some notation, which um, will become clear to you as we go through an example. Um, but basically, this is just this is something that I've sort of notation that I've come up with. Uh, I think it helps, at least it helps me. Um, you should just think of this as like two, like DT and WT are actually like matrices or tables. Um, and so they're going to be D corresponds to the document, T corresponds to a topic. Right. So if you think about what's happening, right. So suppose I gave you the true. I gave you all my words. Okay, I'm gonna instead of saying things, I'm gonna actually show you. Right. So let's say, um, can you discuss? Right. So this is like d equals to one, d equals to two. This is apple. Right. Okay. So then I give you my three, two, three. One, one, two. Okay, so suppose this was my data set, right? What I what actually is gonna be very helpful is to think about the document topic matrix and the word topic matrix, right? So what is document topic? Basically that says the document is at the row, the topic is the column. So in this particular case, what my DT would look like would be D equals to one, D equals to two, T, K equals to one, K equals to two, K equals to three. So when D is one, I have zero, one, two. When D equals to two, I have two, one, zero. Okay? So, it's, so that's literally it. Like, that's what a document table uh, matrix is, and the word topic matrix is um, the same thing. Okay, and then it's also important that I'm going to use this like dot notation. So dot basically means you sort of sum over all of them, right? So dot means you sum over the rows and you just look at the column k. Okay, cool. Sorry, yeah, uh, basically it's columns. <clears throat> okay, um, so it probably would be helpful to keep this slide or notation um, somewhere. Well, okay, I mean, we, we won't be using it just yet. Um, okay, so um, do do do. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically look at the sort of local Gibbs sampling first, right? So remember, we what is the data that we have? We observe the words, right? And then we could consider the case where your Gibbs sampling, you're sort of iterating between the thetas and the zeds, right? So again, uh, this is actually not what we use. So this is not particularly important, um, but this would be, so this would be one procedure you could try to do, right? Um, you could basically alternate between the thetas and the zn's, and it turns out that it, it has this particular form, okay? So the derivation of this is not important, so we're not gonna go through this, um, but the key point is that you could do this, but actually this is not good, um, because what you can do is you can actually sort of integrate out the, top, the topic proportions. And so what you have instead is you have something that looks like this, 
where actually what you're going to do is now instead of sort of iterating over all of the variables that I have, I'm actually just going to iterate over my Zs. Right? So it's actually constructing. So, so what, I'm, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually do a Gibbs sampler on just the Zs. Right? What does that mean? That means is that like, you know, I have my Z1. Okay, so uh, let's say Z11, Z12, Z13, Z21, Z22, Z23. Suppose I have only three, uh, two documents and three words, right? What that means is I'm actually going to basically do my Gibbs sampling on this set of variables, right? So remember what that means is I start with this guy, I condition on this, and I take a sample here. I move on to the next guy, I condition on every other variable, and I take a new sample. And I go all, and I basically go through this, and I keep going. Okay, so yeah, so you know, it's the math is a little bit weird, um, but basically, this is known as a collapsed Gibbs sampler. It turns out that you only need to basically sample the Zs. And from actually doing this sampling procedure, you are able to calculate uh, the theta Ds and the beta Ks. Okay, I, I will be a little bit more specific about how that works. Um, but for now, sort of remember that this is what we're doing, right? So. This notation is basically saying, uh, you know, I'm going to basically sample. I'm going to. I'm, I'm looking at this conditional distribution of a, one of the Zs, and I'm going to condition on every other Z. Okay. Um, so actually, even 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 this is not particularly important because I'm going to actually show you the exact form of this. Okay. Um, so what is the exact form? Um, well, okay, so not yet. Um, okay, actually, I'm going to skip this. Well, there's not much time to skip. Okay, so here, what we're saying is uh, okay, so, no, my slides are in order. Um, okay, so I'm going to skip that. Um, Basically, you can integrate out the topics as well. So all you are left with is this guy here, okay? So, and now, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna obviously go through the, the, the math here, but basically what I'm claiming without proof is that it turns out if I if I want to understand the uh, the distribution of my posterior, right? Remember that's the goal of this. I want to understand the distribution of the posterior. All I actually need to do is to run this sampler, right? Well, what this is basically saying is that I'm you know I'm basically creating samples of my Zs, right? These are the samples of my Zs, right? If, if I go through this procedure, what I'm going to get is I'm going to actually get the, you know, hopefully independent draws from the Zs themselves, right? And as a sort of as a as 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 an artifact of doing that, it turns out that I can actually read off the 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 means the 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 posterior means for the things that I really care about. Which are my beta k's and my theta d's. Okay, so I know this is somewhat confusing. Uh, I think the most important thing for you to remember right now is that we basically reduced the problem of tackling the posterior to doing this particular Gibbs sampling procedure, where I actually go through and just sample these conditional z one at a time. Okay. So how so let's let's now let's look at what this uh, 
what the form of this is. So it turns out the reason why we, we do this is because this has a actually tractable form. Okay. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that let's suppose I already have an assignment of topics, right? So let me let's go back. Where's, where's, where's that example I have here? Okay, so this example is this. Well, actually, let's just take the whole thing. Oops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm saying is, uh, you know, suppose now I have some assignment of Zs, right? Remember the, the green labels corresponds to some assignment of Z. Okay, now I'm basically gonna sample one of the Zs. So suppose I want to sample, I wanna sample a new copy of this. Let me pick a better color. I'm gonna sample a copy of Z11, right? What is the form of this? Well, it turns out that it has this closed form expression right here, right? So the probability that Z11 equals to kappa is basically given by this expression where you're actually just reading off from the document topic table and word topic table, okay? Um, so what is, obviously there is some notation here that's a little bit confusing. So what is this minus dn here? That basically says, I wanna get rid of the influence of the particular word that I'm dealing with, All right? So in order to sample this guy anew, I basically remove that guy's influence in this table, All right? So that's what, that's, that's what it means by minus dn. How do I remove his influence? Well, he was, he corresponds to three here. So that would basically mean I would get rid of it like that, All right? So the document, so this would be dt of minus one, one, right? If I replaced the two with a one, okay? And then the rest is just literally just reading off the, these tables, right? So I have dt minus dn, that's this form where I've gotten rid of this particular, because I'm, because I'm trying to sample the z, the topic label that corresponds to this word, I'm gonna get rid of his influence. And then what I do is I read the D, so the current, the current document, and I read the capper, which is the particular topic that I'm trying to estimate the probability for, right? So if say kappa was equal to one, then I would just read D one. Here we would just be one, one. Okay. Um, and the same thing for the word topic tables. Um, okay, so we're going over. I, I worry that people have other classes to go to, so I don't want to be uh, too bad about that. Um, so, yeah, so, okay, so, so this, uh, this equation looks complicated, um, but really, it's really just reading off these document topic and uh, word topic tables. Uh, and so I have, I have a toy example, but uh, I don't have time to go through it. Um, I actually have some notes I can send out, or maybe I'll, I just don't wanna to spend too much time on topic models because obviously this has like been like three lectures already. Um, okay. Anyway. Um, so I guess the final thing I want to mention is that, um, if you think about, if you think about what this is, if you think about what this is, this is basically the empirical distribution for theta D in some way, right? How? If, if, if I gave you this, right, this is, this is the data I say, and I, if I, and I also gave you the Zs, right? 
how would you guess what theta d is? Well, you would just create this table, and then theta, you know, theta one would correspond to this guy. Theta two would correspond to this guy. Right. So, so it's 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 sort of cute ultimately, because this thing is it's a little bit like like theta d hat. Like it's like it's like your empirical count for what you would guess theta d to be. Um, and so actually, it's this is literally the same thing with 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 a uh, word topic. Um, it corresponds to beta k hat. Um, so obviously, you know that's not coincidence. The you know, um, but I don't have time to go through that right now. Okay. Uh, any last questions? I'm sure there are a hundred questions, but um, all right. I think I'll spend a little bit longer on this, or maybe I'll record a video, a sad video of myself. Okay. No questions. Uh, okay. Um, I guess. I'll see you guys on the Monday. I hope I hope everyone is doing well and healthy and at home and quarantined and manage to you know focus on work, which is really hard. Um, cool. All right. Uh, again, I'll stay around. You can ask me questions while I drink my tea. Uh, professor, yeah. A quick question. Um, I think mm -hmm. uh, I guess a couple things. One is the the difference between I got lost with how z is different from theta, because so I know beta is a topic, theta is the topic proportions, z you say is the topic label, or oh, how z is different from the w's actually, not the thetas, but z's that you call them labels, and then the w's are words. So I, I think what Z stands for is a little bit unclear to me. Um, sorry. So yeah, so, so, so here, like, if you remember uh, the way this works is like, like the Z's here correspond to the, the number, like the, 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 the colored numbers, right? So, so in, order to, in order to generate a, a document, I, at each word position, I generate the topic assigned to that word first, and then I generate the word. Yes. So, so the Z corresponds is, to the, the, the labels, the, like the, 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 the colored numbers here. So then the Z is like the beta, right? Because I mean, like it's essentially the betas are the topic. So when you say like you generate the topic and the word, you're essentially trying to pick, so what beta is this word is supposed to be here? And then what's, that's, that's the part like, how Z is different from the beta or the W is, is a bit unclear to me. Sure. So, right. So the Z's correspond to like, uh, like the number here, right? So it's three. Yes. Right. Yeah. Then what is the beta? Beta three is like, is a list of my vocabulary and like, and like, so, so, so beta, yeah. So beta is a, is a distribution over of words, which basically corresponds to, you know, let's say, the, let's say the first word is can, so it's like point 0.1, you know, the uh, albatross, I don't know how to spell albatross. Yeah. Point 0.3. So, 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 so the beta is just like, it's like literally just a, it's, yeah. I'm, it's going to repeat myself, it's a distribution over vocabulary, but it's like the common words in a topic, right? So how do I use that? I'm saying once I, once I give you a topic, three, then I'm just going to draw a word from this distribution, and that gives me the word that is from this topic. So then the Z is the topic, because Z is the three, right? Yes, exactly. So, so beta is not a topic. Z is actually the topic. Beta is a distribution of words, is a vector, is a distribution over that particular topic, not to the topic itself. Okay, yes. So 
I use the word topic interchangeably. Okay. That is my fault. So yeah. So a topic. Yeah. So. Right. So Z is like the topic name, right? So if I'm saying yeah, I'm talking so about say money. Like topic label. Yeah. Sure. Okay. You can, yeah. Yes. Right. You can think of this as, yeah, like, yeah, fair enough. Like baseball. Um, yeah. No, that's a, yeah, it would probably be better to. Yeah. Baseball so then, yeah. And, okay. Yeah. It is clearer now in the sense that when we talk about the betas, we're actually not talking about the beta is not the label. The beta is essentially just a distribution over the words that correspond yep. to disease, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I I fear that if if everyone it was confused by this, then the last forty five minutes of what I was saying was definitely a. <laughs> no, no, no. So I think it made sense until the the made sense. It was after the. The you were, you were trying to explain the sparsity and post that actually I'd wanted to type the question, but I thought it was a bit basic, so I didn't want to disturb. But as oh, we went on, we should, oh, the okay. Z's, the Z's and the betas, then I wasn't sure what they were confusing. But then I think the other, so the other point, and maybe I just pause 10 seconds in case somebody has a different question because I didn't want to. Oh, no, it's fine. No, 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 just go ahead. Okay, so the second one on the point you were making around the when we were trying to discuss the tension and the sparsities, I thought it yes. actually made sense towards the very end. So the example that I was thinking about was if you yeah. have a topic like, if I was talking about the word river, like if, I, if one document had the word, I was standing at the river bank watching yeah. boats fishing. Like clearly the word bank in that case applies to the, word, to the subject of fishing essentially. But if yeah. I, I went to the bank and I was trying to get money from this bank uh, and then get dollars from the bank, the bank then tends to be financial institution. So your yeah. point around the, the split, the reason why you need the split in topics is for you to be able to allocate different probabilities to the word bank, depending on the topic it comes from, right? Is the way I would, maybe I, I'm getting it wrong because it's like, if I only had one topic, then in the topic of fish, like if you're talking about fishing, the word bank in terms of river bank essentially is not very, very significant. There are other words that you need to assign more weight in that topic. So, uh, so I, so I, I think actually suppose. Does that make sense? Up, yeah. No, no, yeah, you know, it makes sense. But, uh, so that's actually a, my, like it, it, it's a good point, but I think it's actually a minor point. I think that's not what's driving it because you oh, wow. can okay. actually, you, you can set this up like suppose you set this up like your your text in such a way that every word is just has one unique meaning right so 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 i i don't allow you to use the word bank when you mean a, like a river, river bank oh I even see. in that e even in that setting you're still going to get topics so so it's i mean it's it's true that the topic is smart enough that it's able to capture this part like this particular mm. point that obviously you have multiple meanings but I that's see, not I what's see. driving this it's 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 more like the idea that you uh, yeah like the beta case want to be sparse, but if I put too many words into a particular topic, then I'm gonna have to spread out my I have to spread out my mass in some in some in some sense. And I and the point is I I I want to be putting all my mass in as little words as possible, but if I put every single word in every single word of a document into a one particular topic, then I, you know, you know, I, I don't have, like, I, 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 I see I what you mean. Put the words together in a smart way that, you know, these words can sort of appear together. And so that's the whole point. Like you, you're finding it such a way that the words appear together. And so I can decrease I, my sparsity of my topics without actually compromising the, yeah. the sparsity of my, yeah. I, I, I see I, I see what I see what you mean, right? Like the more talk if, especially if you think about betas, I think you referred to my earlier confusion about the difference between betas and Z's. If you think about betas not as topics themselves, but as the distribution of the yeah. entire vocabulary over the yeah. words, then yeah. the sparsity of betas means that I concentrate my probability mass on a few words. But that allows me to do that if I have a blend of topics in each document so that I can exactly. switch my masses around the particular word. 
Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I think if you thought about bidders as the distribution and not those the topic itself, then I think it <laughs> yeah, made, yeah. yeah, I guess that's where I ran into a problem. <laughs> sure. But but okay. it makes sense now. Okay, I'm glad. That's great. I hope, okay. I, hope, I hope everyone is on the same page. I'm worried they're not, but I hope everyone is on the same page. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I think you, yeah, yeah I, think, I think your example was, was helpful. And actually it was when you wrote the, the document term, that's when I realized I didn't get what the topic Z was. When you had, so the actual physical examples did help because then I yeah. realized I, I was wrong. I didn't know what the disease was clearly, so helpful. Yeah, no, I I realize I'm, I'm realizing that I uh, I need more examples. Um, yes. All right. Good. Well, thank cool. you. Thank you for staying on. Uh, I really <laughs> no appreciate worries. it. Okay. No worries. Bye. Get better. All right. Yep. Thank you. Bye. All right. Everyone left. Nice.